A big day in Washington. Congress just approved a measure to fund the Homeland Security Department through the end of September, while Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu warned lawmakers against a nuclear deal between the United States and Iran. I spoke with Republican Senator James Langford of Oklahoma to help us make sense of it all. As Senator, Republicans have praised the Prime Minister's speech, while President Obama and some Democrats have said it was misleading and offered no viable alternatives. My question to you, sir, should U.S. lawmakers be choosing sides like this, and is this a partisan issue? Yeah, this supposedly is not a partisan issue. Republicans and Democrats alike, in fact, all Americans typically support Israel. It's a, a free-functioning democracy, shares our values in the Middle East, and very few uh, nations in the Middle East share our values like Israel does. So they have a long-standing relationship going all the way back to Harry Truman. Uh, but for whatever reason, this has become a divisive issue, and it's a simple issue for Israel. Uh, as a small geographic country with 8 million people in it, uh, very close to Iran, and Iran has said over and over again that they want the destruction of Israel. For Iran then to go create a nuclear weapon uh, seems to have only one purpose in it, and that is the stated purpose of destroying Israel. And as the largest sponsor of terrorism in the world, uh, that is Iran, uh, it's an uncomfortable thing for every nation uh, to have Iran with a nuclear weapon or nuclear capability or even to have the potential to create a dirty bomb. Uh, deal, as, as much as they deal with Hamas and Hezbollah and other terrorist organizations around the world. Uh, so it's one of those issues we have to address as a nation. It's a national security issue. It shouldn't be a partisan issue. Uh, it should be an issue of where we're going as a nation, how we're we protecting ourselves and our citizens and our allies. The prime minister during his speech today seemed to be saying the Obama administration would be naive to think a nuclear agreement would change the way Iran acts. Do you agree with the prime minister? I, I would agree that... Uh, that the administration seems to assume Iran's going to get better. They're going to join the, the rest of the nations. If only they get nuclear capability, suddenly there'll be a better behavior. Uh, in the past several years, uh, Iran has expanded its footprint around the Middle East. Uh, their military is now active in Iraq. Uh, their military is active in Syria. They're propping up the Assad regime. Uh, they just uh, funded and trained and equipped uh, the Houthi re rebels to overthrow Yemen on the just south of Saudi Arabia. Uh, so while Iran now has a footprint in four different nations, we don't see them actually acting with better behavior at this point. We see them trying to expand. So while all the world looks at Russia and sees them crossing over the eastern border of Ukraine and taking territory, a lot of the world is not paying attention to Iran and taking over Yemen and expanding into Syria and expanding into Iraq. But they're doing the same thing. We're talking with Republican Senator James Lankford of Oklahoma and, sir, on another partisan issue, immigration and funding for the Homeland Security Department. What's the next step in addressing concerns over the Obama administration's immigration policy? Well, the next step is already ongoing. A, a court, a federal court, has already ruled the actions of the president was un, uh, inconsistent with law, and they put a stay on the president's actions in a federal court. Uh, the administration has stated that they will appeal that. They have not done it yet, but they will appeal that to the 5th District Court in New Orleans. When that occurs, it will move there. We think that they will still uphold that because it's fairly clear the president did not do what is consistent with the law, even in how he did the change in policy or the policy itself. Uh, so there, the, the focus was not to be able to stop DHS as a whole, whether it be TSA or whether it be border security and all those things. That was not the focus. The focus was to address the president's actions that are inconsistent with law. Whether that's done legislatively, done through a court, whatever means necessary, that's the real focus. One final question for you, sir. Did the vote today to fund the department, did that prove Republicans can't totally control the agenda in Congress even though they control both houses? Yeah, it, it's a misnomer to say that Republicans are in control of Washington, D.C. Obviously, they're in the lead of the House of Representatives. Uh, but in the Senate, uh, we have 54 Republicans. You need 60 for cloture votes. Literally, the Democrats filibustered for almost three weeks uh, the uh, Department of Homeland Security funding uh, right up to the very end on it. So it, this is not an issue that can be totally controlled by any one party. It's the uniqueness of the Senate it forces both parties to have to work together. Uh, if any one party chooses to try to shut down the Senate, they can. Uh, as ironic as it was last night, even, uh, Democrats were opposed to even the time we were going to start debate this morning and try to shut down the Senate over the beginning of the debate time this, uh, for, for today. Uh, so it's become that petty. Uh, they also filed a cloture motion request for uh, President Obama's um, uh, veto of 
the um, Keystone Pipeline. Well, a veto already requires 67. Uh, the Democrats in the Senate also want an additional vote, an additional time on the floor just to debate a 60 votes for, for cloture. So it, it's become really silly on the floor of the Senate at this point with a constant focus by Democrats to try to slow down the Senate to keep it from working and to keep things from moving. At the end of it, we do have to be able to move. We do have to be able to pass bills. Uh, we do have to engage in issues. We should have a bipartisan conversation behind the scenes, and we should allow debate to actually continue. So we'll see where that goes in the days ahead. A big week in Washington. Senator James Lankford, thank you very much for your time today. Thank you.